Welcome to the second video in beginning node in Socket.io. Um, in this video we're going to step it up a little bit and uh, I have went in and coded some new things, some simple things, but, um, but right before we get started I just want to explain, um, I'm going to try to get it, examples that kind of match what you guys may want to do with this, um, both game and app related. The, the one thing I notice in a lot of tutorials I watch or or um, even some books I read is that the, their examples don't really fit what you're trying to do. You can pick up a game tutorial and the next thing you know they're trying to keep, teach you how to count bananas and some weird scripting language that doesn't even make sense. Um, so I'm going to keep everything as, as closely related to what you would use Node for as I can. I'm going to try to give you guys app examples, game examples. I'm not going to go super advanced with a lot of things because this is beginning and I don't want to scare off too many people, but we'll have other tutorials, advanced tutorials later that might might be more for that, but I'm going to try to give you guys a good foundation, a building block off of this that you can just kind of, I'm going to give you a lot of little examples that you can build from. I try to give you the keys of the kingdom to where you can do what you want. Because um, this stuff is actually quite simple. Um, I, if You may get overwhelmed in some places, maybe not, but it, it really does, once you get your head around it, it is quite simple. So to get this started, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to do now. It's very simple, but for now, and we're going we're gonna to build on this in this video, it's just asking for your name. Um, actually, probably need to start the server, otherwise I'm going to get some errors, and I probably need a refresh, but let's, yeah, I'll have to refresh real quick. Um, so I'm just going to put in my name as test, enter name, and it says test is joined. Now, that seems like just an alert. You know, you could build this without Node, but this is actually, to show you, this actually went to the server and came back. Um, the WebSocket, if you pull up your Node um, box, it'll say it's writing name, it's calling on the function test this, and it sent um, the, my name. So if I was to come in here and put uh, Joe, that's not my name, but I'm just putting it in there. It says Joe is joined, and if you notice here, it puts Joe in there. So it actually sent to the server and came back. Now, what useful is is in this? I'll show you here in a second. Um, so let's look at our code. First thing is index. Everything pretty much loads up the same, but there's a couple new things I have. I want to start at the bottom here. Um, this is basic uh, HTML. It's a JavaScript form, I, I guess you'd call it, because um, basically I'm just creating a form called send name that uh, it's just a get method. And when you when you do the on click for the button that I've created, it's going to actually call a function called submit th submit name, and it's going to submit this dot form, which is the form, uh, the basically the form. Um, up here, I have the function that I've defined, and what it's doing is is when you hit the uh, click button, it's coming up here, and it is taking the argument of the form, all the data inside the form, so no matter what I put in here, it's going to send that data to here. And then I'm creating a new variable and calling it username, and then I'm just getting the form dot name dot value. So I'm getting the form, the name, and then the value, whatever we put in there, and I'm putting it in this variable of username to find the define the variable. <clears throat> like before, we're gonna we're gonna send before, whenever we would refresh the page, it would automatically send the socket.emit. Well, I made it to where only when you hit the submit button by clicking is it going to actually send anything to the server. So it's the only connection you're going to see is a heartbeat after that, where it's just double checking on the client to make sure it's still there. <clears throat> as long as you don't hit that button. So when I hit the button, it's pulling, it's asking the server to pull up the function test connection and send this username. So if we go to app, you'll see under test connection that's the same function we used before it's sending the username and then it's emitting now socket.emit means it only sends the data to the actual user the client that it, that was talking in the first place and I'm going to give you examples of this to, to make this a lot more explainable but it's calling on now it's calling on the um, server to do or I'm sorry the client to do test this and then send back the username so I know this seems redundant right now where, where we're sending the server the the name and then the server sending back the name it's the same data coming back and forth and of course this isn't very useful but you'll see how this is useful if you don't already um, here shortly so basically the functions called test this it's bringing in the data and you'll notice I'm changing the the each one of these uh, differently it doesn't really matter because these are all private variables that belong to this anyway I was just changing it just not really I didn't want to change the data I just wanted to keep it the same but anyway it's just sending this name and, and putting a concatenating it the has joined on there so if we do this if we take this and copy it and we open up another browser and we get that browser right on the side right there and let's drop this one down and slide it over. We now have two browsers we can kind of see them talk. So, 
So if we hit test now, it says test is joined, but this guy doesn't know test is joined. Well, that's because in the app, we're only sending socket.emit. Socket.emit only goes to the original client who sent the information. Socket.broadcast.emit, which we'll have to restart our server because we changed our app.js. It's back on. So now if we go in and we enter the name, you'll notice it sent it to this guy over here. So now it's actually talking to the other person. But did you notice it didn't send it to him? Socket.broadcast.emit only sends it to everybody else except for yourself. So think about the uses of that. Let's say you want to send something, let's say you want the server to do some kind of client side, I'm, so, I'm sorry, server, server side, um, let's say a physics thing where you're worried about cheaters. Um, but you only want the original client, let's, let's say we're searching through a chest. Um, you're playing a game and you're searching through a chest and you don't want any JavaScript um, finding loot on the client side because then the clients could possibly hack it. Well, you, every time you search for a chest, you, doesn't, you don't want the findings of those chests going to every single client out there. So you'd use socket.emit. So when, they, when the actual, this user search the chest, it would send that to the server and the server would do any kind of okay what was in the chest and it would send it back only to this client and that also saves on um, on any kind of uh, a lot of data that's going to come back and forth now with this other example where it's sending it to everybody else but yourself let's say that you're wanting to chat let's say you say hey everybody well you don't want that you, you can you can post that without having to send the data you could post that to yourself with your own JavaScript client side and then have the server only send it to everyone else because you don't want the server to send back what you said that's just extra data that you're sending back and forth it doesn't need to be so that's why you would do that and where I use it at is in a lot of my web games um, to save a lot of data if a player moves I will do the socket.broadcast.emit to tell all the other players where you move to and because I don't need to send it back to myself, I know where I moved. So those are the those are the two major different ones. Now you're wondering, well, what do I do if I need to send it to everybody? And there's also a way to do that. If we go to let's go to I O dot sockets dot emit. This will send it to everybody. So let's test her out. First we need to close that out and we need to restart it. Now you notice I don't have to refresh because I'm not actually changing any client side code. I'm only changing the um, the server side code. So if I hit enter name there and you notice it came up, it sent it to both of them. I'm using, I'm a local host and I'm using two Google things so that's why it's going to look a little different but <clears throat> let's test with this guy over here. So you notice it's test and test is joined so it's sending it to both guys. And just to show you, let's do Pete Pete has joined. Pete has joined, and I, I'm kind of over, I'm kind of going redundant again with this. But Joe has joined. Joe has joined. So it's going to send the clients to 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 everyone. It's going to send whatever you sent to everyone. And of course, you can think of the uses there too. Well, a lot of a lot of real good uses there is if you want to run some kind of function every let's say six seconds. Let's say you want to do an update of check for spawns. Let's say skeleton spawns. Well, if a skeleton spawn responds, or I mean, if the if it spawns, then you can send it to everybody. Um, and if you come and look at your actual um, server box, you'll see that it's sending those datas, PP, JoJo, because it sent it twice for each one and one for each client. 